A major risk to personal health and safety at work arises out of manual handling operations. It's estimated in industry that up to 52 million days per year are lost due to back problems or work-related upper limb disorders. Regardless whether you are a crane driver, construction worker, mechanic, office worker or a person that holds a supervisory or managerial position, the one thing that you will all have in common is that there is likelihood that you will at some time be involved in manual handling operations. Over 25% of accidents reported each year are associated to manual handling. These are usually attributed to the reluctance of individuals to ask for assistance when undertaking manual handling tasks and the lack of knowledge in the correct lifting and carrying techniques. This macho image is industry-wide and not only associated with certain industrial sectors such as construction. What is manual handling? Manual handling is the transporting or supporting of any load or loads by hand or bodily force. This includes lifting, putting down, pushing, pulling, carrying or moving. In spite of all the training, Statistics show that back injuries, which can be attributed to manual handling, have increased steadily over the last few decades. The kinetic approach to lifting was developed, and this looked at the principles of movement, posture and flow techniques, and to change people's perception and attitude to lifting. When an untrained person is faced with a load, he or she will lift and, unfortunately, over a period of time, injury will be sustained. This is likely to be serious and long-lasting and could be debilitating. The forces induced in the spine through lifting incorrectly can be considerable because when bending down to lift, the muscles of the back and hips work at a mechanical disadvantage of between 6 and 10 to 1. It's fortunate that we can all avoid these injuries and the suffering that accompanies them by using the correct lifting technique at all times. Risk assessment. It's an important requirement of the Management of Health and Safety at Work Regulations 1999 that a meaningful assessment of the risks is made. This is based upon a thorough understanding of the type of manual handling which is to be carried out, the individual performing the task, the load to be handled, and the environment in which the task is to be carried out. The following main areas should be used when undertaking an assessment. The acronym of TILE should be used. Task, Individual, Load, Environment. Task. Does the lift involve holding an object or load away from the trunk? Twisting the trunk, lifting off the floor, carrying a long distance, repetitive handling, team handling, excessive pulling and pushing. Person. Does the person require additional strength or special training or knowledge? Are they suffering from any disabilities or disadvantages? such as injuries, age, gender, fatigue, pregnancy, or the influence of prescribed drugs. Confidence in lifting. Equipment. Belts have been used in weightlifting sports for many years and will provide a small degree of extra protection when fitted correctly. But when worn for long periods of time, have a tendency to make muscles weak and lazy. Protection of other areas of the body whilst working is provided by basic PPE. To protect the head, you would wear a hard hat. To protect the hands, a pair of gloves would be used. For the feet, a pair of protective boots or shoes. 
What can be done to protect the back? 1. Use equipment. 2. Wear a lifting belt which is suited to the user and is the correct size. 3. Lifting training. Environment. Are there any space constraints preventing good posture? Are there any slippery or unstable walking surfaces? Or steps, slopes or changes in level? Are there extremes of temperature, humidity or poor ventilation? Is the area suffering from poor lighting? Base movements. Kinetic lifting, the six-point lift, is characterized by a set of base movements which are defined as actions which begin with the relaxation of the knees and the automatic adjustment of foot positioning. Using this technique for lifting, balance is maintained by relaxation and the natural positioning of the body weight. Lifting can be analysed via the following six steps. 1. Look at the load. Inspect the load for size, shape, grip and potential instability. Any writing on the load to indicate weight or contents. If you think you can't manage the load, seek assistance. 2. Foot position. The best foot position is gained by placing the feet hip width apart with one foot ahead of the other. Initially, place the foot forward which feels most comfortable to you. Then practice with the other. 3. Bend knees and back straight. The relaxation of the knees and the adjustment of the body weight through the feet completes this base movement. In this position, the front foot is flat on the floor and the heel of the rear foot is raised. It is impossible to keep the back perfectly straight when lifting in this way. Until individuals feel comfortable with lifting in this way, there may be a tendency to lean excessively forward for extra balance. 4. Test the load and take a firm grip. With the knees bent, the head can now fall to view the load and the hands can reach down to touch the load. From here, the load can be tested by gentle rocking to assess if it's within the individual's capabilities. Take hold of the load using the diagonal grip method. This involves positioning the hands at diagonal opposites. This diagonal grip provides support for both the load from below and draws it towards the body. The correct positioning of the hands and feet help reduce the need for twisting during the lifting process. 5. Lift with the legs with the load close to the body. The upward movement of the load is initiated by the headlock. This is achieved by gently raising the head and tucking in the chin. This movement straightens the neck, raises the chest and shoulders and encourages a straight spine throughout lifting. The load-bearing arm remains relatively straight during lifting, with the load being brought close to the body as it clears the knees. As the body is raised, the rear foot moves the body forwards. 6. Put down with care. The load should be kept close to the body during the lowering manoeuvre. When axis is limited, approaching the destination at an angle using the staggered foot position will help keep the load close until the weight is supported. Combining these six events will result in a six-point lift. Remember, one, look at the load. Two, correct foot position. Three, bend the knees and keep the back straight. 4. Test the load 
and take a firm grip. Five, lift using the legs and keep the load close to the body. Six, put the load down with care.